Hi, welcome to Moina Bass Issues. This is Jim Moina. And in this video, we're going to talk about the Champions Tour Tournament on Big Stone Lake. This is 2023, by the way, in case if you're watching this in the distant future. So, <clears throat> uh, this is their first tournament of their series. They got three tournaments and a championship. Big Stone Lake, it's the first time I've ever been to Big Stone Lake. It's over on the South Dakota, Minnesota border. It's about 20 miles long, mile and a half wide for the majority of it. It's kind of weird. It's like a river impoundment, I believe, a Minnesota river, I believe. Uh, a lot of, lots of weeds. It's shallow. It doesn't get that deep. Maybe 20 feet max or so, 25, something like that maybe. A lot of uh, a lot of less than 10 foot of water kind of stuff out there and a lot of weed growth lots of uh, just miscellaneous grass of various types so <clears throat> going out there so I, I ended up having one day of practice because I had the Potomac River event I had to fish before so as soon as the Potomac River event ended I got my truck that afternoon drove slept four hours Finished the drive, got to uh, Big Stone Lake at 9.30 p.m. on Tuesday night. Got up <clears throat> got up and on the water by 6.30 the next morning at uh, Big Stone for my one day of practice. Which, uh, and what I was looking for, <clears throat> one thing I like, when you have a, a lake that has just a vast amount of vegetation, a lot of times if you find the hard bottom spots in the in, uh, in and amongst that vegetation. That's a lot of times where you'll find bass collecting. So that was kind of my plan was uh, to start looking at that. Um, and it wasn't hard to find rock. In the, there was like big boulders and stuff in, in the middle of all this grass. Oh, mosquitoes are getting me. So it wasn't hard. So I had plenty of that kind of stuff to, that I found and I fished a lot of it. I didn't just mark it. I fished it. And I wasn't catching any. I was catching drum. I was catching, uh, caught like two bass, but that was it. Um, in the middle of that, there was one time where I ran some shoreline stuff. And I think I caught like three little fish that would have counted because in the champions tour, it's a, uh, league where every fish counts. So each competitor has a marshal or a boat official so when the pro catches a fish, the boat official weighs the fish, it's recorded, and then the fish is released, you know, right where you caught it. There is no, there is no weigh-in, typical weigh-in, where you bring all your fish back to uh, the uh, takeoff and weigh-in area. There's none of that. So it's good, it's good for the fish's health to uh, catch them and release them right where you caught them. That's, that's one of the big strong points of uh, the, this sort of, uh, format amongst other strong points so anyways uh <clears throat> back to my strategy so i caught a few little ones shallow that were count that counted um in this tournament it was a one pound your bass had to weigh minimum of one pound even in order to score so if you caught a 13 ounce bass that would not even score one count so some of these fish i caught shallow were small but they counted and, uh, but it still, nothing was clicking. So then I go out and fish deeper some more and the deeper bite, just, you know, looking for the rocks amongst the weeds and which I could find, you can find that out there. Uh, there is a ton of just soft bottom weeds, but there's some rock in some of it. And, uh, it's really cool. You get, you'll get these rock spines just running right through the weed beds and stuff. And then they may look beautiful, but. It just it was not holding bass. So finally, uh, finally it had enough of it. I'm like, I can't do this. I mean, I fished tons of beautiful rock habitat buried in these weeds. You know, some were like shallow, some were deeper towards the edges of the weeds. And everywhere I looked, um, it just, I came up uh, empty handed. So, it got to be about three o'clock and uh <clears throat> you know registration it was at five so it got to be three o'clock 
still out fishing and so now i decided to move shallow again and just beat the bank run some docks and that's when it really started happening for me um in the next between three and when i took the boat out at at uh in time for registration um which was no more than an hour an hour and a half i mean i just i started just getting bites left and right i mean lots of bites and quality fish not i mean not just bank little one pound bank runners i was getting like four plus pounders and uh multiple four plus pounders and you know two pounders and one and a half pounders and three pounders it, it was on it was really cool so but then i had to but then i had to quit my fishing so so i had the pattern i knew what i wanted to do i knew the places i needed to target except i mean i knew the type of places i needed to target the thing i didn't know was okay on this lake that's 20 miles long which stretches of shoreline are the good stretches which ones are the dead water that's what i didn't know so it was just gonna be a crapshoot the next day and <clears throat> so anyways the way they format this tournament uh what in addition to what i mentioned already is they also divide the lake so and by that i mean they they have two sessions they they have a morning session of four hours and then they have an afternoon session of four hours with a one hour break in between where we come in for lunch which is kind of pretty cool because you can come in for lunch take a deep breath and if you need to make some tackle adjustments you have time to do that so that's kind of cool i kind of like the uh one hour break in the middle of the tournament it's because you can make those just those adjustments they, they, i mean there's stuff you can re-rig or come up you know you can just reset your mind if you're happy if you're struggling you can just kind of think about some things you need to do to maybe get back on the fish or get on fish but anyways so that's the format so on the, the first half of the day we were everybody had to fish the minnesota side of big stone lake and then the second half of the day everybody had to fish the south dakota side of big stone lake so it was a 65 boat tournament i drew up boat 59 so my idea being boat 59 was <clears throat> i'll just take uh um just the first available sh stretch of shoreline i'll i'll take is uh, meaning you know first available stretch of shoreline where it looks like i've got at least you know maybe at least a quarter mile of it you know that i can run without somebody else being being on that stretch and so that's what i did and and i ran it horse fly or that's actually it was a deer fly so i i ran it started catching fish right away and i was in I was in contention pretty much all day. Um, the lowest I dropped, I think, was seventh place. At one time in the morning session, I was seventh. But uh, by the time the morning session was done, uh, I believe I was in third after the morning session. And then came the afternoon session, which threw us a wild curveball, big time. So this is what happened when we came, we, we came in at 11 for lunch. And you could see that there was some, there was some, something building in the sky, right? But it was very early in its infancy, so you know, no big deal. There was talk of some storms later in the day, so the tournament staff was aware of that, and they even had a uh, we had a discussion about that at the at the noon break or the eleven o'clock break. And then they sent us back out to fish the South Dakota side at the scheduled time of noon. And you could see it look, you know, started looking like, hey, it looks like, yeah, there'll be some rain coming up the, you know, up the lake away for sure. Well, you know, I'll never, I didn't think that, put, I didn't put my rain gear on. The My marshal, he didn't have his rain gear on. And then I had a, I had a cameraman in my boat and he didn't have his rain gear on. We, we we ran up the lake and then came around the, this bend a little bit and you could see like a wall of rain up ahead <laughs> and nobody is front no, none of the other competitors in front of me were stopping so i'm like well i'm not going to stop either <laughs> this this might have been one of the dumber things i've done but 
we drove through some super heavy, heavy rain. And, uh, um, I mean, all three of us were just soaked head to toe by the time I got to where, where I wanted to fish. And I wanted to fish up the lake, okay, because that's where I got on the pattern the day before. And it just so happens the morning session, I ended up fishing the lower end of the lake. And uh, I felt like that wasn't living up to what I saw on the upper end of the lake in the last hour and a half of practice the day before. So I wanted to go up that lake and that's what I did. And I got up there and I literally fished for like 10 minutes in which I lost like a five pounder, uh, just came unhooked. I bought him for about six or seven seconds and he, took a run under the boat and came unhooked. Uh, and then it wasn't long after that, we got a call from the tournament staff saying, Every, fishing is done, or fishing is being uh, suspended for the storm to blow through. And so we sat around for a half hour and a half, waiting for the storm to go through. And then it went through and then we resumed fishing. And then I went about my business I was challenging. I was as high as second place. Uh, never, I never took the lead, but I was right there, right there. And I think I ended up just one fish, one decent fish away from the win. I ended up third place. Um, and it was, it's bittersweet. I mean, I only had one day of practice. If you told me at 2:59 the day before. That, hey Jim, you're gonna finish third tomorrow. I would have been like, yeah, all right, I'll take it, bring it on. But I don't know. It's it's bittersweet because um, once I got on that pattern and figured it, and you know, once I figured out that pattern, I I really knew I could contend. I mean, for sure, make a top. I mean, I was really confident of making a top ten out of the 65 boats, and then if things when at all decent i could maybe challenge for the win I and mean, i did challenge for the win but didn't, i didn't quite take it down i mean i had i had the fish hook that would have you know gave me the winning winning catch but that's the way it goes that's the way it goes gotta get all this i mean you're not gonna get all of them in the boat but dang it yeah that's at the potomac my two biggest fish i hooked up they both got away and now that might, that, I don't know if that was my biggest fish. It, it might have been. Uh, it was because I had two other fish that were upper four pound. They weighed like 413 or right in that range. So this fish was certainly in that range, maybe bigger. Anyhow, uh, so how did I, let's talk about how, how I caught him. What was the strategy? So it ended up, I ended up figuring out that, uh, you know, like I said, Early in the day, I tried a little bit of shallow water and I caught a few small ones off of docks. Well, that docks were a key player for me. Um, it just so happens like um, some of the docks I fished early in the day maybe weren't quite so prime. And but if you fish enough of them, you'd start catching some fish. So and so I did catch some fish off the docks. The the trick was though, um, and this was the tr this was the key for the whole lake is. The fish were like in this deep of water. So if you fish the dock, if you fish just the end of the dock where it was like three to four feet off the end, that's not where, I mean, you might catch one there, but that's, you're better off fishing the short end of the dock. And that's where I caught a lot of my fish were right up against shore under those docks. So probably half of them. And then, uh, and then some of them would be out like, it depended on, on the slope of the of the of the uh, lake bottom there. So it, basically, you wanted that clean area before the weeds started. So that clean area from the shore to where the weeds started under the dock, that's the zone you wanted to fish, and that was usually two foot or less. So if you and if you fish the end of the dock where it might have been three or four feet, and there was a bunch of weeds in there, uh, that was just no good. The other half of my fish came uh, against, um, there's a lot of like boulder shorelines with like boulders, like, I don't know, anywhere from like this to this. So there's a lot of that and a lot of just scrum, just scrubby weeds with algae and cheesy algae. And, and you had to get your bait 
uh, to the shoreline where that rock was and you'd work an alley maybe like three feet wide before you hit the weeds. So those fish were laying in this deep of water in that little alley. And for those fish, um, you know, a frog, uh, weedless frog, well, let's just get right into it. Here's the frog I used. <sighs> That's the frog I used. Um, and I'd skip it under the dock some too, but for some reason I never caught one under dock with this. But um, <clears throat> this frog worked good because you, it, the, the weeds were just nasty, slimy, and grimy and stuff. So you'd work that little bit of alley, and or there might be some weeds that you might have a wider alley. Like the really super wide alleys weren't as good. You wanted that just like three foot alley uh, right up against that rock. If you had a super wide alley, your if you had like we like a mat of dead weeds blown in on the shore, then that would be an opportunity where you could catch one on a wider alley. Uh, but so yeah, this frog was good for just crawling it over the that's, that's just slimy weeds and gummy stuff. So that worked pretty good. Uh, and as far as frogs go, I think I lost, I think I lost like only one or two fish on that frog. Uh, one for sure. I mean, I reeled the fish, I had them hit in the alley and I had to, I let, I mean, I had to make a long cast, cast it all the way over all these, all this matted weeds to get to the alley. Fish bit, bit back there <clears throat> and I had to reel them like, a long ways over the top of this stuff and I literally reeled this fish and it was like a three to four pounder maybe not four pounds but all of three and I was reeling and reeling and reeling them halfway and just kind of skiing them across the uh, the cheese and then he just came unhooked so didn't get that one that one that fish would have got me second place because I was only behind second by like less than a half a pound I believe so <clears throat> So yeah, so the frog, so I didn't really miss too many on the frog, which is good. I had a couple like roll on it, and that's when I'd use this other bait. And this is, and oops, where is it? Oh, here it is. So what I would do, I should have set this up before I started filming, but anyways, this, so I was using a, uh, this wacky hook right here with the uh, nylon weed guards, I guess you'd call that. And I was using this worm, rig wacky style, like this. So, and this is a weightless worm. There's no, I haven't inserted any weights in here or nothing. And so what I do is I'd throw this up there in the, let's say I missed a, let's say I had a fish roll on my frog then I'd throw this up in there, and I, and literally, I, like, 9 out of 10, well, I didn't have 10 opportunities, but there was only, like, one or two times when that happened where this did not go back in there and get get the fish to bite again. So this was, so these were the two big players. It was a simple tournament. It was this, this or that, really simple. Now, I did, like, that big one I talk, told you about uh, right at the beginning of the period two, that was on this and I had in practice when I found the fish in practice it was I caught some of them on this and they were good ones so that big one was on on this uh, top water here um, it's but it's kind of a pain pain in the butt and plus you risk losing the fish which because uh, with treble hooks you know you sometimes you can't lean on them too hard and that fish was all over the place. He was a hot fish, just all over the place. Ran in this way, and then he ran, came screaming right by the boat. And uh, <clears throat> I really didn't want to stop him. And then all of a sudden he took an unexpected turn and went under the boat, which I did not want him to go there because I was at this point I was kind of at I was kind of in the alley, so the shore was just right next to me almost. And the fish came between me and the shore, which was he, the fish was just freaking. And then he decided he wanted to go deeper, so he went under the boat and got in some weed growth and pulled these troubles off somehow. So that was, uh, I don't know what he could have done different. And it was, that was right during the heavy, heavy rain. And I, I was throwing a buzz bait for a while, 
to start that second period when that heavy rain was coming, but it was just a quarter ounce buzz bait. Wish I had, I had I wish I would have had my half ounce ready to go and because with that heavy rain, you just you, I think you need a bigger bait with more commotion to uh, to get your bait noticed. Because the fish are the fish bite. I mean, the fish were I'm sure they were biting really good during that that heavy heavy rain and stuff. So, but those were the baits, and that was my strategy. Third place, you can go to classicbass.com to see the full results of the tournament. Congratulations to uh, Joel Willard. For the win he took the lead in the first period and kind of built a nice lead and nobody could run him down so because he did fall back to the pack a little bit but um not all the way dang it that's right i just needed one one more good one would have done it so anyhow thanks for watching and uh really appreciate everybody's uh interest in this channel and watching this channel I'm here to uh, educate and entertain. Sometimes I may not hit the mark, but here I am anyways. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. And this is shot from home base in Minnesota, where I'm at. Over.